From the lab to the field, chemistry is more than academic. The high-tech tools of modern science are providing new security, and a chemistry student gets a chance to experience tomorrow's technology today. Hi, I'm Tim Tyndall, and today I'm going to make science fiction a reality. The march of science and technology is allowing the U.S. Air Force to turn chemical and biological detection into a field art. Today, Tim Tyndall, a 20-year-old chemistry enthusiast from Jacksonville, will receive a first-hand opportunity to test out some of the tools that have made this evolution possible. Tim has received special access to Eglin Air Force Base, where he's about to meet an elite team of bioenvironmental field specialists. I got interested in chemistry, actually my, my dad sent me a book on organic chem and I remember just like sitting down and just reading it religiously. For Tim's introduction to hazmat duty, he starts with a tour of the team's response trailer. Hi there, How I'm you doing? Tim. Airman Bochamp, Bioenvironmental. Nice to meet you, Airman Bochamp. Airman Ferguson, good to meet you. Nice to meet you. So what exactly is Bioenvironmental? Uh, well, it's a career field that focuses on keeping workers safe and healthy. Bioenvironmental specialists are charged with making sure their fellow airmen can operate in a safe environment. A job that entails everything from investigating combat sites to identifying mysterious and potentially toxic substances in the field. Well, we have our response trailer here. We got all our equipment loaded up. So let's go take a look at some radiation detection equipment. Awesome. This is our micro hour meter. You may have heard the term Geiger counter before. Uh, that's essentially what this is. It just measures gamma radiation, tells us if there's radiation present or not. So I have a radiation source here. It's not dangerous at all. We're going to get this closer. And that's what happens when we get near a radiation source. Wow. I can really see that shooting up. Hopefully we won't get into too many harmful radiation sources. Absolutely today. not, no. But since airmen must be prepared to confront such dangers, the team lets Tim get inside their most indispensable piece of equipment. This is our uh, level A suit. This is our top level suit as far as protection goes. And we'll have you jump in the suit. Oh, that sounds great. I'm excited. Let's do it. You just want to slide your feet all the way Step down, down to the into bottom. Them. So what sort of things, things does this suit protect from? Generally, if we get something that splashes on us, uh, it's going to give us enough time to exit the scene get cleaned off and get out of the suit. Push it to your face and then pull this back over the back of your head. Are right, you now go deeply? ahead and inhale. All right, you're on air. I can certainly understand why someone would feel claustrophobic in this though. So let's go ahead and get you the rest of the way suited up. All this uh, equipment that you have to put on, how mobile are you? It's a lot harder to move around and do things with your hands. You're gonna see when you put on these gloves. All right, so you can see how, how thick these gloves are. It's pretty hard to really feel anything or do a lot with your fingers, so. Let's get you out of that suit. Let you play with some of our uh, other equipment. Now it's time to put some tools of the trade to the test. Having seen how the bioenvironmental team's sensitive detection gear is used to identify substances ranging from a mineral isotope sample to mystery powder, it's Tim's turn for some hands-on hazmat investigation. And we're gonna have this sample right here for you to use the hazmat ID to try to identify it with. Awesome, I'm excited to get my hands on some of this equipment. This actually uses an infrared laser technology, shines it through the substance, detects different wavelengths, and it actually analyzes those, and the computer will actually tell you exactly what substance we're dealing with. You see that it's a finished analysis. And you can actually take a look at the top matches. And it says that it's non-dairy creamer. It's amazing. Yeah. So I see we have this uh, piece of equipment here. What exactly does it do? Uh, this is called the HAP site. It stands for Hazardous Air Pollutants on Site. So this actually works off two technologies. Uh, the first one is a gas chromatograph. Basically, it sends the chemicals through a column, burns them off, and depending on how long it takes for that to happen, uh, we know what it is. The second one's a mass spectrometer. It bombards it with electrons. We can identify what the chemical is that way as well. All right, now that it's done analyzing, we can actually take a look at the screen here. Uh, basically, we would analyze all these different little peaks that you see on the screen, and from that, uh, we can have pretty good confidence saying that this is just regular gasoline. All right, thank you so much. This, this has been a great opportunity. It's so cool to see, you know, what people can do with their minds and what they can really take to the next level. I'm just really excited to see some of the advances that we're making.